Hello and welcome to worship with Resurrection Lutheran Church in Shanahan, Illinois. I am Pastor Ben Ingelson. I'm glad we're together for worship today. I hope our worship video, or I hope our worship service um, provides an opportunity for you to feel connected with God, to experience God's presence, God's love for you and your life, as well as to feel connected with the ongoing ministry and mission of God's church. Special welcome to our guests and visitors who are worshiping with Resurrection Lutheran Church for the first time. We're glad you're with us, as well as a warm thank you for all of our friends who are continuing to worship with us through these worship videos. And so with that, we begin our worship service today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. God bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day, the gift of worship, a time to praise you, to thank you, and a time to be fed and nourished by your grace and your goodness. We pray that your Holy Spirit would help us to prepare a way, to prepare a way for you to reach us, as well as to prepare a way for you to move past and through us and your church so that your goodness and your grace and your love and the gift of your son Jesus Christ would be made known, made known through our words and our deeds this day and this week. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God is with us. Tend to our brokenness and mend us, God. Reach us in our captivity and free us, God. into our fear and calm our hearts, God. Look upon our sin and forgive us, God. Soothe our worries and grant us peace, God. Bridgewood divides us and bring peace among us, God. O come, O come, Emmanuel, prepare your way through our lives and your world so that the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, fills our souls and shines bright in, among, and through us. Amen.
A reading from 1 Peter. So roll up your sleeves, put your mind in gear, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil, doing just what you feel like doing. You don't know any better then, you do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy, you be holy. So ends the reading. A reading from Mark. The good news of Jesus Christ, the message, begins here, following to the letter, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Watch closely, I'm sending my preacher ahead of you. He'll make the road smooth for you, thunder in the desert. Prepare for God's arrival. Make the road smooth and straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wild, preaching a baptism of life change that leads to forgiveness of sins. People thronged to him from Judea and Jerusalem, and as they confessed their sins, were baptized by him in the Jordan River into a changed life. John wore a camel hair habit tied at the waist with a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild field honey. As he preached, he said, the real action comes next. The star in this drama, to whom I'm a mere stagehand, will change your life. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. His baptism, a holy baptism by the Holy Spirit, will change you from the inside out. So ends the reading. Well, we are in the season of Advent, and one of the themes that comes up in the season of Advent is preparing the way of the Lord. We heard John the Baptist just proclaiming that in the reading from Mark, prepare the way of the Lord. And so for our conversation today, we'll spend some time digging into what it means or what it might look like to prepare the way of the Lord in our own life. And it seems like the obvious connection here is the schoolyard playground game of red light, green light. Are you familiar with this game? Have you played this game? Right, I'll do a quick demonstration, but uh, if you haven't played it, someone stands at the front and they're the stoplight, right? And this person says, red light! And when they say red light, you can't run. But as soon as a person says green light, you get to run. Red light. Green light. Red light. Right, you got to stop. Green light. Okay. And then the first person who can run all the way to the stoplight and pass the stoplight is the winner. So, what if we thought of playing red light, green light as a way of getting into this notion of prepare the way of the Lord? And here's where I'm going with this. In our own faith life, what if we think of ourselves, we're the red light, green light person, we're the stoplight, and Jesus is the one who's running towards us across the playground. I realize maybe it's a bit presumptuous to think like we're controlling whether or not Jesus gets to run or not, but just as a way to think about preparing the way of the Lord, right? Let, let's just go with this here. We'll run with it, if you will. Um, okay, so like the ways in our life in which we through our own heart, through our own use of our time, through uh, our actions, right? We, we can give Jesus the green light to run and to greet us with the love of God as well as to run right past us as well. So just a practical example of what giving Jesus the green light can look like in our daily life. So right now, uh, a bunch of the kids of Resurrection Lutheran Church are making Christmas cards and they're making Christmas cards to go out to uh, the folks of the church. Now, to make Christmas cards, right, for all these kids to be making these Christmas cards, a lot goes into it, right? First, there's the parents and guardians kind of trying to rally the troops, like, all right, kids, this is what we're going to do. Then there's the explaining, making the connections of why this is a good thing to do. And then there's the kind of the teaching of, of Christmas cards and maybe the message that we're going to write. And then there's the, the, the making space on the counter or the table. There's the getting out of the crayons and the pencils or the artwork supplies or there's the getting the Christmas cards out. Then there's the time that it takes to actually draw and write out, right? And for our younger kids, that time to write those sentences and draw those pictures, right? That takes time and energy and effort. 
and uh, then there's the looking up of the addresses and there's the addressing the envelopes there's getting a stamp on it it's getting it in the mailbox or to the post office so for this project for our kids to make and send these Christmas cards a lot goes into it and I would say that each and every one of those steps that goes into our kids making these cards is like giving Jesus the green light because as we do as we do all of those things for the sake of sending a Christmas greeting for the sake of sending God's love through the mail that's giving Jesus the green light and and when those cards when they go out Jesus also goes through the mail it's like Jesus has run to us we've prepared the way of the Lord we've made the space in the room and we've used this time and energy to, to make all these cards like Jesus runs to us greets us is with us at the table as we're writing these messages and uh, as, as my kids we were working on this it wasn't harmonious the whole time by any means but you know there was a sense that Jesus had come and sat at the table with us as we were writing out and making these Christmas cards and then as we mail them Jesus goes to the mail and the love of God arrives as people open these letters this is what I mean by Jesus runs to us is with us and then keeps going right Jesus just keeps running this is what it can look like to give Jesus the green light. We make that space, we, we, we do what it takes to prepare the way of the Lord to reach us and to keep going past us. So, part of red light, green light, of course, is the red light part as well. Now, I'm not saying we intentionally give Jesus the red light, stop Jesus! But there are ways in which we can kind of keep Jesus at bay in our life as well ways that we maybe get in the way. We don't quite have that room for Jesus to just come and reach us and keep running past us. So uh, let's just think of it this way. Have you ever felt stuck uh, with some regret? Uh, and since we're talking about cards, let's just go with the thank you note. Uh, have you ever had the experience of you didn't get the thank you note written uh, in what you felt was a timely manner? And then like with each passing week that you don't get that card, that thank you note sent, you, you kind of feel disappointed in yourself, perhaps you're embarrassed, and it makes it harder to just sit down and write that thank you note, right? We can kind of get stuck in those feelings of the moment has passed, it's too late. Those are ways that we unintentionally put up the stop sign for Jesus, just in our own stuckness. And so in this case, when, when we've been kind of keeping Jesus at bay, just getting that thank you card written, giving that Jesus the green light would simply be, okay, I'm just going to write this thank you note. Six months would have been better if I would have done it back then, but today is the second best time to go ahead and do it, right? But there's countless ways that we unintentionally kind of give Jesus the stop sign, ways that perhaps we avoid doing what Jesus is calling us to do or ways in which we kind of clutter up our lives that seems to get in the way of Jesus just being able to reach us when we need him. There's countless ways we can hold up that stop sign. But the thing is, this is why Advent is a helpful time of year, right? Because it calls us, it encourages us to be aware of those ways we're saying, hold on Jesus, <laughs> and give Jesus the green light to prepare the way of the Lord, for the love of God to come and reach us as well as to keep going past us. And here's the thing. When we give Jesus the green light, right, he is fast. Like he sprints across the playground and he's right there quick. When we give Jesus the green light, whether it's taking some time for prayer or watching a worship video or doing something for someone else, an intentional act of kindness or generosity, right? The love of God just like, it shows up in our life and then it just keeps going past us. When we give Jesus the green light, I assure you that this does not happen, right? Jesus does not run up to us and then greet us with, hey, why the stop sign for so long, right? No, Jesus doesn't say that. Rather, as soon as we give Jesus the green light, he, he runs to us, hugs us, shares the love of God with us, and then kind of gives us that uh, pat on the shoulder and says, thank you. And then Jesus just keeps running, right? The love of God, it just keeps going through our words and our actions. Jesus just keeps going. 
So just some questions for your own reflection today, this week. In what ways do you think right now you're holding up the stop sign to Jesus, maybe keeping Jesus at bay? What's some of the clutter that seems to be in the way of Jesus reaching you and the love of God being shared through you? And then another area for your reflection is how might you give Jesus the green light today (laughs) or this week? Maybe it's taking a little time for prayer or daily devotion. Maybe it's Maybe you're going to schedule a time this week when you're going to go visit some of the websites of your favorite charities and you're going to make some donations, right? Maybe you're going to schedule a time you can do that. Or maybe this week you're going to forgive somebody. Or maybe you'll go shopping for one of the 20 kids that Resurrection Lutheran Church is providing Christmas gifts for this year. But how will you give Jesus the green light today or this week? As Peter says in that reading from 1 Peter, so roll up your sleeves, put your mind in gear, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil. Just do what you, slip back into those ways of evil, you know, just kind of doing whatever you feel like, but rather let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life. In other words, as Christians, we're called to engage in a life in which we're over and over again giving Jesus the green light, celebrating and receiving the peace and the joy that comes through the Christ near us, as well as giving thanks as Jesus keeps going and the love of God is shared through us. It's good. It's very, very good. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all God's people everywhere. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you continually 
show up in our lives and you greet us with your love and your goodness. We thank you that you find ways around the stop signs that we might put up so that you continually empower us with your love. And we pray that you help us to share your love through our words and our deeds. We pray that you help us to prepare a way, prepare a way to our heart, prepare a way to our lives, as well as prepare a way through our lives so that you can be a blessing to others through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your whole world. We pray that your peace and your goodness would be made known so that peace would exist between nations, peace would exist between peoples, peace would exist within families. And we pray that you would help us to do the hard work of peace, to bridge what divides, to mend what's been broken, to forgive what's been hurt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that your Holy Spirit would nudge us and move us in the ways that we feel stuck today. In whatever way we feel stuck, whether it's past regret, shame, embarrassment, fear that we don't have what it takes, whatever it is, we pray your Holy Spirit would move us past it so that you would prepare a way to us and through us and we would be freed, freed from whatever has us feeling mired today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue praying for the whole world as we live through this pandemic. We continue praying for everyone who is sick this day. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are worried today. We pray for all of us whose lives we're trying to make a way through this. Give us the patience we need. Give us the fortitude we need, the creativity we need. And we continue praying for this vaccine, that it works, that it does what we need it to do. We thank you for the brilliance and dedication you have given to the scientists and researchers who have made it. We thank you for the courage of all those who have been part of the, the tests. We pray for healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, everyone who's caring for those who are sick this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our neighbors who are most vulnerable at this time, especially our neighbors in nursing homes, prisons, essential workers who continue to put themselves at risk, keep our world turning for our sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue praying for our teachers, administrators, and students who are all trying to learn and educate in new and oftentimes challenging ways. And we pray too for the families and the parents who are supporting their kids through this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also remember our loved ones who have gone before us, who aren't with us, especially during this holiday season when we often so miss them and their presence. Comfort us who mourn and give us the hope we need to trust in the power and gift of eternal life, that we are indeed together with them through you, through your son, Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of our prayers, God, we entrust into your hands through the gift of your Son, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. Yeah. And also with you, please share God's peace with those you are with today or those you encounter this week. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with Resurrection Lutheran Church. Today, I'm glad we had this time together. I hope our worship video has been a blessing to you, a source of encouragement um, as we, as all of us together, try to prepare the way of the Lord. If Resurrection Lutheran Church can be of any source of support and encouragement to you at this time, if we can help you prepare the way of the Lord, uh, please reach out to us and let us know how, and we'll be glad to do so. Go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.